This is the fifth and final segment on topic 2.3, work energy and power. And here we're going to talk a little bit about the relationship between energy and momentum. And if you remember, momentum is that measurement, that quantity that we use to address an object's mass and velocity. And the momentum of an object equals mass times velocity. So it's fairly easy to find uh, an object's momentum. And we should remember that momentum is one of our perfectly conserved quantities. And so in any particular system, the momentum of that system is going to be conserved no matter what. Uh, hopefully this looks familiar. And what that means is that if we look at all the objects in the system, that all of those individual momenta are going to be conserved. And what we find though, and let's look at a sample here, an example here of two train cars colliding. And if we have, let's say we have two cars. We have one, and we'll call them both the same size. Let's say one has a mass of 3,000 kilograms. The second one also has a mass of 3,000 kilograms. And let's say that the initial velocity of the second car is zero. And the initial velocity of the first car, so U1, is 10 meters per second. And it's traveling towards the second car. So we can very easily find the initial momentum of this system. The initial momentum is the, or the total momentum is the momentum of the first object plus the momentum of the second object. The second object isn't moving, the second car over here. And so all of the momentum is in the first train car. And so that's going to be 3,000 kilograms times 10 meters per second. which gives us a momentum of 30,000 kilogram meters per second. Right? Now when they collide, let's say it's an inelastic collision, and so the two cars stick together. Well that means now that our final mass, or our new mass, is going to be the two combined. And so our final mass then is 6,000 kilograms. Let's find out what our new speed is going to be. Okay, and so we know the momentum is conserved, so our initial momentum has to equal our final momentum. And so P equals mv, and so v here, which is our final momentum, or our final velocity rather, is equal to the momentum divided by the mass which is equal to 30,000 kilogram meters per second over 6,000 kilograms, which is going to give us a final velocity of 5 meters per second. Okay, so momentum stays the same, the mass doubles, the velocity is cut in half. That seems fairly reasonable. Well, let's look at the uh, initial kinetic energy and compare it to the final kinetic energy of the system. And so here, again, let's rewrite what we had. We have our momentum remember before and after is 30,000 kilogram meters per second and 
our m1 is just the mass of the one moving car which is 30 which is 3000 kilograms our m2 is double that it's 6000 our initial velocity is was 10 meters per second and our final velocity was 5 meters per second so now let's compare the initial and final kinetic energies and so our initial kinetic energy one half mu squared so we have uh, 3000 over 2 times 10 squared and so that gives us let's see 1500 times 100 so that gives us a kinetic energy of 150 kilojoules or 150,000 joules now let's compare Compare that to the final kinetic energy. And again, same equation except here we have a new mass and a new velocity. And so now our mass is 6,000. And our velocity is 5. And so we're going to get 3,000 times 25. And our kinetic energy here is going to actually then be 75 kilojoules. And so what you're noticing here then, our kinetic energy has actually decreased. We've lost kinetic energy. And this goes back to what we talked about when we talked about, uh, about energy and, and its conservations that mechanical energy is not necessarily a conserved quantity total energy is and so here our kinetic energy is part of our mechanical energy when the two trains collide there's energy that's converted we have kinetic energy that gets converted into other forms it gets converted into sound it gets converted into thermal energy in the molecules as the two collide and so in our collisions, and remember this is an inelastic collision. In an inelastic collision, by definition, there is a conservation of momentum, as always, but there is a loss of kinetic energy. So two types of collisions, or the two types of collisions that we're going to be dealing with, are elastic and inelastic. Elastic collisions, you think about elastic as bouncy elastic collisions, objects collide, bounce off of each other, and go their separate ways. In that type of collision, both kinetic energy and momentum are conserved, but that's only in perfectly elastic collisions. Inelastic collisions are when you have a loss of kinetic energy, but momentum is conserved. And really, those are what most collisions are. You don't have perfectly elastic collisions. All collisions are slightly inelastic. There's always some energy that's lost in the collision. The most inelastic kind is when the two objects actually stick together and that's the situation where you have the largest loss of kinetic energy. So again, elastic collisions, there's conservation of both momentum and kinetic energy. In inelastic collisions, there's a conservation of momentum still, but there's a loss of kinetic energy as it gets converted to other types.